Welcome to AATCM YouTube channel. Today, we will introduce an equipment that is a flexible bronchoscope. With me, I have Dr. Jerry, sir, Professor in Anesthesia. So, can you just introduce the parts of this uh, equipment? Okay, there are so many varieties. This is uh, one of those uh, disposable types that's available. Okay, as you can see, this is the scope. This is the flexible scope, okay. which will have a light source, a suction channel, mm -hmm. and also a chip at the tip, which gets uh, transfers the image to the uh, screen that you see there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are flexible bronchoscopes uh, with fiber optic. This doesn't have any fiber optic, so it's you can actually flex it in any way you want without damaging it. Whether the fiber optic, you don't have that advantage. Okay. 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 And then you have a liver here mm -hmm. with which you can adjust the tip. So this is the only movement which is available. Okay. So if you want to maneuver it in, then you need to do something like rotations and stuff like that. And so basically, the it. movement there is only in two directions, yeah, right? Yeah. That's all. Okay. okay. And then you have a small knob here for suction. Okay. When you activate it, it does the suction. So okay. the connection will come here for yeah. the suction. The suction tube right. can be connected here. Okay. Okay. And there's another channel here through which you can do some flushing or something in case you have some problem to clear it, clear okay. the uh, channel. Okay. 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 So, uh, so even for other other kind of uh, forceps and other things might be can be introduced. Yeah. You can this. put a forceps through that. Yeah. Maybe take small punch biopsies like the pulmonologist does. Okay, okay. okay. But we will limit our discussions not to the pulmonological interventions, but more of like emergency and critical care point of view. Okay. So can you just uh, explain uh, in a difficult uh, intubation kind of scenario how this equipment can be of any help? Okay. This is not an equipment for an emergency intubation. True. That's something that you should understand. Because to organize it and intubate, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. You might lose valuable time there. But in the anticipated difficult airway, you can use it as a planned technique. True. Okay. Mm -hmm where you prepare the patient yeah. and do it before the patient gets into real bad shape. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I would recommend a technique of going through the nostril okay. because that is much easier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll just show you how it's done. Yeah, I have a deflated tube here. Okay. Prior to that, you may have to anesthetize the patient's airway with some yeah. uh, local anesthetic. Okay. And then, I'm just trying it. You can look at the screen. Okay. Right. So here we are right. demonstrating a nasal intubation, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've reached the pharynx and I can see the structures. See, I can see the epiglot is there. Yeah. Okay. Now here you need to do a bit of manipulation to enter. All right. Mm -hmm. See what I'm doing? I'm rotating and then yeah. trying and to... seeing the cords. Yeah. yeah. Now I've reached the cords. I'm yeah. still going to enter. Okay. Right. Now I push it all the way down until I reach the carina. I can see the carina there. Right. Okay. Right. It's not very clear. Yeah, and but then, we can... Yeah. yeah. And then what you do is you thread the tube down. Okay. 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 When you reach the glottic opening, okay, it may not go in easily. You may have to do a bit of rotation because okay. uh, the tube may get hitched by the vocal cords. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So that's how you manipulate. Okay. Now you now, can see the tube. Yeah. Yeah. Now I am inside. Yeah. And I can see the carina down there. Okay. Right. See that? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. So the tube. Yeah. Just about. Fine. And after that you inflate and then connect to the ventilator water. True. Right. True. Uh, regarding oral, uh, the same same technique can be yeah. used, right? Oral can be done. The only problem is orally, technically, it's a little more difficult. Okay. Or you could use certain conduits. We use special airways called Oversapin airway, okay. Berman airway. Okay. So that will help like a small tubing which will uh, go up to the cord. And then mm -hmm. once you're there, you can mm -hmm. introduce. Otherwise, what will happen is that, see, technically, I'll just show you what happens when you okay. try to do an oral intubation. Yeah. So see, they put, it, put the tubing. Yeah. Yeah. Because the tongue keeps on moving all the time. Okay. So that comes in the way. True. Right? True. And there's nothing to stabilize the scope until you reach there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. It may look technically easy now, mm -hmm. but <laughs> in reality it's a difficult thing to yeah, do. Yeah, now we have what? Right? Yeah, cross the cords and okay. in the So all you have to do is just push the tube down okay. along with it and then same technique I used. But technically it's a little more difficult. See, I'm finding it difficult okay, to push okay, the tube okay, down. Okay. okay. It's All difficult those to enter. Right, right. Okay. Got it. All right. Yeah. So, will a bigger tube uh, anyway help in bigger uh, scope? Uh, yeah, bigger scope. There's a problem. When there's a disparity between the size of the scope and the tube, it again becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. If the sizes are close together, for example, this is a 5 size, 5.5 uh, 5 size mm -hmm. uh, bronchoscope. So, if you use a 6 size or 6.5 size, it's okay. But if you go for an 8 size through this, then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the difference in size, that is what creates the difficulty in yeah, yeah. getting across the vocal cord. True, true. Right? Yeah. 
So I think we'll discuss one more scenario where we we usually use in, uh, in the ICU kind of settings to do a lab batch. So if you can just demonstrate that also, it will be helpful. Right. So we'll put the tube first and then yeah, probably. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll integrate through the nose it's because it's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right, I'm entering. Mm -hmm. So again, I can see the vocal cord epilotus and everything. Mm -hmm. I've manipulated. I'm just about to enter. Yeah, yeah I've entered. Okay. All right. I push it all the way down. Yeah. Now we have the again ET intubation has been in. done. I've yeah. rotated the tube. We're yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you need to do a lavage, for example, yeah. you find that there's a patch in the lung on the left side. Okay. 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 So you need to go, and if you can identify which specific area it is. Mm -hmm. If you look from here, you can see what you see down there yeah. is the left upper lobe. Okay. Yes. Okay. What you see up there is the left lower lobe. Yes. Okay. So yeah. if I need to enter the lower lobe, okay. what I can do is just keep on going in there. See mm. the divisions are okay. gone. Okay. Okay. Done. Done. So I can reach okay. the uh, distal areas depending upon the size of the bronchoscope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A five size may allow us to go up to about three divisions or maybe. Mm -hmm. Fourth one very unlikely, but mm -hmm. that's as far as you can go. Okay. Right? And then you can maybe flush a bit of saline through this mm -hmm. and take it out through these channels. This channel. Yeah. Okay. And this can right. be connected to a wall mount suction yeah. or uh, or you can even uh, connect yes. it to a mucus trapper. Okay. Okay. Into which you can collect it. Okay. And then send it for sampling. Yeah. Yeah. So, likewise, we do the right side also. Yeah. Like if you want to enter the right side, again I come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've reached the carina. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. I rotate the scope this way. And that again depends upon your uh, knack. Okay. You okay. learn it by yeah. practicing. True, true. That's how you do it. Okay. So this is the right yeah. Yeah. lower lobe. This is the middle lobe. Mm -hmm. And as I come up, I can see the right upper lobe. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me see. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the right upper lobe. Yeah. yeah. So, so how much uh, NS do you recommend to be given for a more like an ICU kind of? Uh, that will depend upon the patient status. Someone okay. who is severely hypoxemic, mm -hmm. it's better that you don't instill too much. Mm -hmm. But 10 to 20 ml should not be. 20 a ml might be yeah. reasonable. Yeah. What you should remember is that if you put 20 ml, that 20 ml is not going to come not back. Not going to come out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't expect it to come back. Yeah. yeah. So that itself can produce certain degree of al alveolar collapse and everything, mm -hmm. and further worsening of hypoxemia. Mm -hmm. But the intention is basically to get a sample so that you can send it for culture or sensitivity. Microbiological or yeah. okay. So other scenario will be a mucus plug. So there also probably the same equipment can be helpful, yes. right? Yes, yeah. So, But the plug may not come in, come out easily because it will depend upon the channel size. Actually. Okay, okay. So if you want to do that, you may have to use a slightly bigger scope. Okay, okay. So we'll use a bigger scope and... Uh, Identify the mucus plug and probably use a suction yeah, to suction to activate. It out. If it doesn't come out, you give flush so that it becomes a little loose. Okay. And then you can pull it out. Okay. Okay. Do you anticipate any other use in a critical care kind of scenario with this equipment? Or? These okay. are the main things. Okay. Suppose the patient has got, if you suspect a tube block or something, mm -hmm. that's another usual, uh, useful, right. very useful right. thing. Right. For example, you find that the airway pressure has gone up. Okay. You are not sure where exactly this block is. Mm -hmm. It may be further down below the tube. Mm -hmm. If it is in the tube, it is a clear indication of a change in the tube. Yeah. So, yeah. quickest way to find out that is to okay. put the scope inside. Okay. Okay. A suction tube is not always a very good indicator of the tube patency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the mucus may be soft. Mm -hmm. When you push the scope in, it will go a suction catheter, it will go across. Mm -hmm. When you pull it back, it will just come back. But the patient's expiration is always passive. Mm -hmm. You understood? Mm -hmm. So that passive expiration may not be able to push, push air it out, out yeah. across the scope. Yeah. So that's very important. Thing. So more of a diagnostic point of view yeah. also in a yeah. uh, ventilated patient, this can be of use, right? Okay, sir. Thank, thanks a lot, sir. Right. So, so I'm sure all of you would have got an idea about uh, the equipment and its uses predominantly in an emergency and critical care kind of scenario. Thank you.